Hey, what's happening, gearheads? Trumpeter Bobby Spellman here to answer the age-old question, how much does trumpet equipment really matter? On this episode of... Trumpet with Bob. If you play the guitar or the keyboards or any other instrument that doesn't require you to press the instrument right against your lips, uh, you may find that changing your equipment can have a drastic impact on the sound that your instrument makes. Changing the make and model of your guitar or the kinds of pickups that you use or the strings, the amplifier, or the effects can have a giant impact on the way that you sound and by switching those different components around you can recreate certain sounds that you love from your favorite musicians or come up with something entirely new. Now one of the cool things about playing the trumpet is that each individual musician has his or her own set of lips and the nature of the trumpet being the fact that we're pushing the instrument against our faces and those lips, our fleshy meat reeds, are creating the sound means that each of us as individuals has a unique sound. Now that isn't to say that the equipment that we use, the mouthpiece and the trumpet, do not have an effect on the way that we play the trumpet, but it may be to a lesser degree than those instruments that are not directly uh, pressed against our faces. So, today I wanted to explore the concept of how much uh, the equipment that we use as trumpet players really has an impact on our sound and the playability of the instrument, and to what degree it just has to do with the way that we practice and the way that we approach the instrument. So, in order to answer this question, I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to play a phrase of music with four different trumpets with the same mouthpiece, and then I'm going to use the same trumpet, switch up mouthpieces, and you at home will be able to tell uh, to what degree the equipment that I'm using is shaping the tone of the instrument, and to what degree my own personal sound shines through all the different kinds of equipment that I'm using. I may also try to do different combinations of trumpets and mouthpieces to try to make a more drastic difference, and we'll talk a little bit about the different ways that those instruments and the different combinations of the mouthpieces and the trumpets make it easier to play certain things, harder to play certain things, or to what degree I think it made a big impact. So, to begin, I'm going to start with my old trusty Martin Committee. This is the trumpet I'm used to playing. I figured that'd be a good place to start. This is my, this is really the trumpet that I, that I, I feel gives me my most uh, personal sound. And I'm also playing on a Austin Custom Brass Custom Reserve TA1+. Now, this is the mouthpiece I've been playing for a while. I love this mouthpiece. These are the things that I'm most comfortable with. So I'm going to start on this trumpet so you get a feel for what this sounds like. And then I'm going to switch up some trumpets so you can get uh, a sense for the different sounds that I can get out of the trumpet. And you can decide for yourselves how much that impacts the way that I'm playing. So I'm going to play a little phrase of music that I've invented for the occasion that will cover the whole range of the instrument and hopefully give you a good idea of what the instrument sounds like in uh, throughout, the, throughout the whole range of the instrument. Uh, here we go. So there you have my regular setup, a Martin Committee trumpet from the 1940s with a uh, Austin Custom Brass mouthpiece. Now I'm going to switch the trumpets up, but I'm going to keep the same mouthpiece. So you're going to notice I'm playing the same mouthpiece in all of these, so you get a sense for really what the different trumpets do to change the sound. So I thought it'd be fun to start with what's probably the least expensive trumpet in my very small trumpet collection. I'm not much of a gearhead myself, but uh, I've collected a couple of trumpets over the years, and this is an etude. Uh, these will go new for probably around 350 bucks. This is a student trumpet, uh, so this is the kind of thing you could start out with, and uh, this is what it's going to sound like if I play the same phrase using this etude student trumpet. So that is a etude student trumpet with uh, my regular old mouthpiece in there. Uh, feels different to play, but you can hear the uh, the way that the it shapes the tone, and you can decide for yourself how much that makes all the difference. All right, now we're gonna switch over 
to a BNS Challenger. I played this trumpet from the time I was in eighth grade until I got through grad school at NEC in 2012. Uh, this is a trusty trumpet, and you get a sense for what this sounds like. Same phrase, same mouthpiece, different trumpet. All right, and there you have it, BNS Challenger. We got one more trumpet in the mix. <clears throat> this is a P. Moriat PMT 700. I played this trumpet for a couple years after grad school. I like this trumpet a lot. This is a medium large bore horn, and uh, that sounds a little something like this. Now, just for comparison, now that you've heard these trumpets, I'm going to go back to my old standard Martin committee, play it one more time for you so you can hear what that sounds like. Right, now that you've heard what this trumpet sounds like with this mouthpiece, I'm going to take my trusty Martin committee and I'm going to try a couple other mouthpieces so that you can hear the way that the mouthpiece is going to shape the sound of the instrument as compared with the instrument shaping the sound of the instrument. So I am going to start now. You've just heard me play with the my uh, Austin Custom Brass Custom Reserve TA1. I'm going to switch to a regular old Bach 7C mouthpiece. All right, and that is going to sound like this. This Box 7C is what you're going to get right out of the case. Generally speaking, you pick up a new trumpet, you get yourself basically a Box 7C mouthpiece. This is what everybody starts out on. It's going to sound a little something like this. So that is a Bach 7C. Now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and I'm going to use a Monet B5. Now this is probably the biggest mouthpiece that I have. It's a V-cup mouthpiece. It's got a real, it's a really big, uh, you can see how much space we got in there. It's a little bit of a bigger rim than a three. It's right around a three rim, but it's about a V-cup. And that is going to sound like this. We got one more mouthpiece in the mix, and that is a stark contrast to that. This is the Bobby Shoe Lead Mouthpiece. It's the Yamaha Bobby Shoe Lead Mouthpiece. You get a little bit of a sense for how this shapes the tone, and it sounds like this. There you have it, and once again, as a contrast to the Bobby Shoe mouthpiece, I'm gonna go back and play my trusty old TA1+. So, as I'm playing through these things, you can hear a little bit about the way that each of these uh, trumpets and the mouthpiece is shaping the sound. What I notice is that it's a very subtle shift. However, one thing that I do notice is as I'm playing this, the feel of playing each of these mouthpieces and the trumpets is very different. That's something that you can't check out at home, uh, but I can feel the difference. 
Uh, so there is a lot of value in the equipment side of things. If you're just trying to find something that you're comfortable playing with, that uh, you know, you're able to do what it is that you're trying to do, and it feels comfortable to play. Now that's gonna be different for every human being. Everybody's gonna have a different approach. Some people might find it better to play a more open trumpet. Some people might find it better to play, let's say a medium bore trumpet or whatever. There's any number of mouthpiece combinations that you could try out. Uh, but each individual is going to have their own preference for what the trumpet feels like. And that may be a little bit different than what the trumpet sounds like. Now here's what I'm going to do right now is just to give a little bit more of a contrast, I'm going to just pick the two most contrasting trumpet mouthpiece combinations I can. So you can get a little bit of a feel of what it might sound like if I try to make a drastic change in the way that the trumpet plays. So I'm going to start off with my Martin Committee and this Monet B5. You can hear what that sounds like. Now on the other side of things, I am going to take out the old etude student trumpet, pop in, let's say this Yamaha Bobby Shoe lead mouth piece, let's see what this sounds like. So if I'm changing all the equipment, you hear a pretty, you know, pretty drastic change in the way the tone operates and the way that this trumpet feels with this mouthpiece is very different. Now, one of the things that happens is when people start playing the trumpet, and if you've just started playing the trumpet or you've been playing for a little while now, uh, one thing that can happen is that it, the inclination is to say, all right, well, my tone isn't the way that I want it. Maybe it's the equipment. Maybe I can go out and buy all new trumpet equipment, some really top of the line stuff, and all of a sudden I'm gonna get a really nice tone on the instrument and it's gonna be easy to play. However, uh, in my experience, generally speaking, when you're just starting out playing the trumpet, the most important thing, and this is true regardless of what you know level you're at on the trumpet, you could be playing for a long time, it's still the same, is it's gotta be 95% the way that you play the instrument. So I think almost anybody, you know, well-seasoned trumpet players can pick up just about any trumpet and make some music with it and make it sound good. And uh, if you just started out playing, there's a, you know, you might have a little ways to go just to get a sense for just developing a nice tone the way that you want it and, uh, you know, the technique in order to be able to drive this thing. And that will come with time. I've taught countless students over the last 17-ish years I've been teaching and each and every one of them has been able to succeed and create beautiful music on the trumpet. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while, but with some perseverance, no matter what kind of equipment you're using, you will be able to create beautiful music. Uh, I'm sure that somebody like Clark Terry could have made beautiful music just on a garden hose with a uh, funnel attached to the end of it. But if you have the opportunity to try to uh, look through different trumpets, try out different trumpets, your best bet once you have uh, some experience playing and you're feeling comfortable and you feel like you can get a good tone on the instrument that you have, is to go out and try out different trumpets. Go to trumpet shops and try out different things, try out different mouthpiece trumpet combinations. A couple things that you can look for are the tonal color that you get, the way the trumpet feels when you're playing it, and the intonation of the instrument. Uh, very often, and uh, this was surprising to me when I first learned it, different combinations of mouthpieces and trumpets will have different intonation in different registers. So at times you might find that a certain combination of a mouthpiece and a trumpet will give you a, let's say, uh, flat notes on a G or an E flat, whereas or an E rather in the staff. And then uh, by changing the mouthpiece trumpet combination, you may find that you get better intonation. Even as I'm playing these things now, I'm noticing that my intonation, especially up uh, above the staff, is better with certain combinations of trumpets and mouthpieces. And that's definitely something to look out for. If you are just starting to play the trumpet and you're looking to buy a trumpet, I will make a couple of recommendations. Number one, you can start with a trumpet that is as uh, basic as this probably $350 student A2 trumpet, and you can get really good results. I know great professional trumpet players who play on, uh, or who have had to play on student horns from time to time, and uh, have, have had great results. So the only thing that you wanna look for when you're buying a new trumpet is to make sure that it has a brand name on it. If it's got no name on it, you may end up running into some trouble. You want the company to be proud of their equipment. So buy a trumpet that has some uh, reputation, it's got a good reputation. Uh, a couple of my favorite student trumpets, this A2 is playing great. Uh, a couple of my favorite student trumpets are the Bach student trumpets and the Yamahas. 
and uh, you can find them often for very good prices used. Now, the thing to remember about brass instruments is that they, you can buy them used and it's fine. It's not like an old, uh, you know, it's not like an old car or an old computer or an old printer or something like that. Like, my trumpet's from 1945 and it plays amazing. I love it. It's my favorite trumpet I've ever played. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with getting used trumpets. This is made of metal. The brass will hold up and uh, gives you a good opportunity to get a good price on a good student trumpet without having to spend too much money for a new piece of equipment. The other thing you want to look out for when you're checking out a new horn, if you're just starting out on the trumpet, is to make sure that the valves work because I will guarantee you that's the one part of playing the trumpet that the equipment will make a huge difference. If you find that the valves are constantly sticking despite how much valve oil you put on there, it's going to really give you a hard time when you're doing your, you know, you're doing your best to practice the material and you're trying to get everything together and the valves are not working for you. So there is definitely a lot of value in paying attention to just making sure that you're getting a fundamentally functional trumpet when you're uh, buying a new trumpet. But after that, all of the equipment changes and mouthpiece changes, trumpet changes, anything that you can do is going to be extremely subtle. Now, that being said, as you continue to play, as you get more comfortable playing the trumpet, uh, and if, as you're watching this now, you're at a state where you've been playing trumpet for a long time and you feel like you've got a lot of control over the instrument, now is a good time to really think about the way that you're shaping not only the sound, but the facility with which you play certain things uh, with certain equipment. It becomes a subtle, uh, you know, switch in your ability to play certain things. Uh, let me give you an example. If I'm going to play, you know, typically I'm a jazz improviser. I spend a lot of time... Uh, improvising and I want my own personal sound to come through the horn and in those instances the setup that I prefer the most that has given me the most uh, you know in terms of the tone and the facility of playing whatever I need is this combination of the Martin Committee and right now this uh, Austin Custom Brass TA1 Plus however if I'm going to be playing let's say uh, the lead in a funk band or any number of other things, lead trumpet, uh, God forbid, if I'm put in those situations where I've got to play the high notes. In a big band, I will always switch to a mouthpiece that's got a little bit of a shallower cup. And it's not to say that I will be able to play higher notes necessarily, but it will make playing those higher notes for long periods of time a little bit easier. There's always a little bit of compromise made anytime you're switching equipment, and the more you play around with it, the more you will get a sense for what those compromises will be. But I think that you will find that as long as you're spending the time practicing and really honing the craft of playing the trumpet, all of the, all the equipment is going to do is just make very subtle shifts to the uh, comfort in the way that you're playing the instrument or in the tone. So I hope that answers the question. How much does, how much does equipment matter? And I think the answer is both not at all and quite a lot. It just depends on what level you're at playing the trumpet and what it is that you're trying to achieve. Now, the most important thing that I can say about all this is really just that the equipment will not make you a better player. You have to make yourself a better player. All right, gang, I hope that helps in your quest for musical excellence. If you like this video, you can give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more trumpet videos. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful time practicing and I'll see you on the next one. See ya. Trumpet with Bob. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helped in your understanding of the musical world and in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like this video, you can let us know by giving it a like, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more musical education videos going forward. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Bob Spellman, for some more musical fun. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students online as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com or you can send us an email at ridgewoodschoolofmusic at gmail.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, try to set you up with a great teacher for the kinds of music that you're looking to study. All right, gang, well, thanks again, and until next time, happy practicing.